Here we're going to be doing an infinite geometric series. So what does it mean to go to infinity? I like this mean it's based on uh, The Office, right? Uh, no, uh, yeah, The Office. That's the American version with Dwight Schrute. But it says to infinity and beyond. False, you cannot go beyond infinity. Well, in this case right here, uh, if we want to add up all the different terms in a geometric sequence, uh, let's see what happens. So can you add up an infinite number of terms? So in the past, I've been showing you how to add up different terms. Let's see that if it's geometric, let's see what happens here. So geometric, remember, means you multiply by the same number. In this case right here, this is a geometric sequence where, let's see, the first term is 1, and the ratio is 2, because I'm always multiplying by 2. So this right here would be it, right? If I wanted to do this right here and add up all the different terms, I wanted to do like S infinity, how would I do that? Well, maybe it makes sense to you that if I keep adding up all the terms, I go 1 plus 2 plus 4 plus 8 plus 16 plus 32. Does it make sense right here? The answer would just be infinity. Like the, the more terms I add up, just the bigger the number would be. So we say that this series, we say it diverges. Okay, so this series diverges. That means it does not reach uh, one specific value. So this right here is not going to be helpful. We cannot add up the infinite number of terms. Well, we can. We just get an answer of infinity. That doesn't. It's not very helpful. But what if it's a geometric? Um, and I guess you can guess just by the way I'm setting it up here. But let's do, do this. This is geometric as well. So the first term is four, and the common ratio is two over four, which is one half. Okay. So we go u one is four, r is one half. Now let's see what happens. Now remember how we do um, the general term, so the nth term of a geometric sequence. Remember how it goes? It's u1 times r to the power of n minus 1. Now what I'm going to try to do is set up something. Um, I'm doing it a little bit formal. I just want to show you something really neat that happens. I want to show you about convergence as opposed to divergence here. So if we look at this one right here, let's actually try to do something with it. Let me try to do this. So I'm going to set it up like a, a geometric sequence. So this one here, u1, I'm going to put in this number 4. Uh, this one here, the ratio is 1 half. I'm going to do n minus 1. That tells me the nth term. So if I want to do the first term, you know, this is just, you know, put it in 1. If I want the second term, I put in a 2. But if I want to add up all the terms, I mean, yes, I could use that equation that we've also learned for sn. It's a complicated looking one. I'm actually going to try to do it with sigma notation. Watch carefully. If I add up all the terms, I'm going to start off with n equals 1. Then I'm going to play around with what value to make this. So I'm going to say basically add up all the terms until I get to the second term or the third term or the fourth term. See what I mean? So I can make that 1 or 2 or, you know, 100 and see what I get. Let's see what I actually get. So I'm going to do this on my calculator. I'm going to see if I can get open my calculator here and do it. Um, we actually have a button right here uh, on my TI Inspire, at least. It lets me do sigma notation. I'm going to actually play around with this. I just want to show you what I can do. So if I make n equals 1, like I just said I would do here, so n uh, equals 1. Okay, and I'm going to um, set this up really nice. So 4. Uh, times, I'll put a bracket here, I'll put a nice pretty fraction, I'll say 1 over 2, and I'll say that all that to the power of n minus 1. Now what am I going to do with this number right here? What I'm going to do is I'm going to set it up to where uh, I'm going to play around with that value. So maybe what I'll do is, you know, I'll copy this, say so here, I'll do copy. Now I'll change how far I go. So watch, if I add up just the first one term, it should be dumb, it should just be 4. Okay, that makes sense. But what if I do um, paste, except this time I change this number to 2. See that I'm adding up the first two terms? So I'm doing 1 plus, so 4 plus 2 is 6. What if I keep doing this all the time, except this time I make this number, I don't know, 100. Let's just see what I get. Well, I get something, right? Let me estimate it. Do you see it gives me around 8? What if I do this thing right here to the power, uh, so not to the power, but like, I don't know, to, you know, 200. Let's just say what I get. I get some number, and I can just say, uh, go, that gives me 8. Do you see it gives me roughly 8? So actually, the sum actually gives me 8. So we say the series converges. Okay, this thing here converges, which means it gives me one number. So this right here, I can do it. Okay, do you notice something now about it? Let me just show you actually with a graph instead. So I decided to do that uh, same thing right here with a graph. 
except this time I'll make this right here. I'll put that on the x-axis just to see what happens. Um, so this one here will just give me this little stepwise function right here. Do you notice then as I increase the number of terms, do you notice the value? Do you see why we say it converges? Because it's got an asymptote here. It converges to this number. In this case, this number is 8. Isn't that neat? So we say this thing right here converges. All right, so let's look at then what can we say about an infinite geometric series. Well, we actually have a formula for this. And this is what's really important to it is this. We have to have that the r value must be less than 1. Well, we'll say the absolute value must be less than 1. This is going to be the key thing right here. It basically means make r a fraction. It could be negative, it could be positive. We don't care about that, but it's got to be a fraction. So the sum of the infinite terms, so if it converges, so if this is the case right here, if your r value is such that, you know, you're getting basically smaller and smaller numbers, then you can add up an infinite number of terms. Um, so let's do this. We actually have an equation for it. We say s, and we put a little infinity symbol. This thing's got a lemnus skate here. So this one right here, the infinity symbol, it actually just becomes uh, u1 over uh, 1 minus r. That's it. So as long as, you know, I'll write it maybe formally like this, as long as you know, the absolute value of r is less than 1. This is the formula we're going to use here. This is it. Okay, so that is what I need here. So I'll just uh, delete that other stuff over here, because I already wrote it down. There we go. So this here is the formula we need. This is the formula for the infinite term. So let's see if we can actually do this. Um, so we'll calculate the total sum of this sequence. Total sum. That means add up all the terms here. Well, let's first check if it's geometric. It better be. So let's just see here. Can we find u1? Can we find the first term in this? Well, yeah, it's 50. Can we find r, though? r is going to be 25 over 50, which is going to reduce to 1 half. So yay, that's going to work. Right? So that, that'll actually do it. I just wanted to fix my 5 here. I didn't think my 5 was very nice. Um, so that gives me 1 half. Because of that, then I can check. Is the absolute value of r less than 1? Yes, right? because this is 1 half here. So this is smaller than 1. So yeah, that works. That means I can use this equation. So I, you know, if I'm doing this on a test, I would show my teacher that I know how to do this. So I would say, okay, well, I'm going to say then that the, you know, sum to infinity is u1 over 1 minus r. I'm going to show the substitution. I'm going to show that I know what I'm doing. So u1 is uh, 50 and r is 1 half. All right, well, if I'm going to do this, then uh, let's see here. I need to make a common denominator. So I'll make this 2 over 2 minus 1 half. If I do that, uh, now I can just say 2 minus 1 is just 1 half. So I have 50 over 1 half. Remember what happens if you divide by a fraction? You multiply by the reciprocal. So it's the same thing as saying 50 times 2 over 1, which is just 100. So you see, we found out what happens if I add up these terms to infinity. Which is, it's actually kind of cool that you can do this. And I think this is really awesome. Uh, that reminds me actually of a really, really bad joke. Are you ready? Uh, so an infinite number of mathematicians walk into a bar. And the first one orders, uh, you know, one beer. The next one orders a half a beer. The next one orders a quarter of a beer. The next one orders an eighth of a beer. And, you know, frustrated, the bartender just hands over two beers and says, come on, guys, know your limits. Get it? Because you add up the first infinite. Oh. All right, so why should you care about doing this stuff? I mean, yes, you can add up the infinite number of terms, which is pretty neat. Uh, but I mean, you can actually do this. This helps, you know, to characterize sound waves in physics. It's, you know, the time for a ball to stop bouncing. Let's say you have a ball and it bounces from a certain height. And we say, you know, it goes half as high. Then it goes, you know, half as high again and half as high again. You can say, like, how far does it travel in total or what's the time to stop bouncing if you have a pendulum going back and forth it could be you know how long does it take for it to do that that's you know an example there's, there's lots of them in mathematics and in science um i like this little joker here so yo you good at math yeah just ask me the question all right so if, you know you cut a cake into three parts it's one third right yeah all right but isn't one third just point three 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 like yep well then where did the other point zero 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 one go then because you know you do this times three so you're dumb, it's on the knife, you cut it with. <laughs> it's actually just because you're rounding, right? But actually, there is a trick to actually doing this. You could actually set up, let's say, a repeating decimal. So something like this. You know, you can look at the number 33333 3, 3, 3, 3 repeating. You know, this number here repeating. You can see it as this is 0 0.3 plus 0 0.03 plus 0 0.003 plus. Do you see how you can do it? 
Well, you can see this as geometric then. You can say, ah, the first term is uh, this, 0.3. The ratio, you can figure, well, this divided by this, you'll see it's related to tens. And you could just do that infinite, uh, and that's actually how you can use um, this trick right here. So this trick right here with infinite geometric sequences to actually figure out uh, what a repeating decimal actually gives you. In other words, you start off with 0.3333333, you'll end up with one third, which is actually kind of neat.